need to well, no, be like done are valid concerns. Know. Roberts Automotive so, understands this. Like That's why yeah, they abide like by a code of ethics to help keep your mind at ease. When bringing your vehicle to Roberts Automotive, they'll explain how to correct existing problems and perform preventative maintenance. Most importantly, Roberts Automotive knows your vehicle is more than transportation. It's a lifeline to work, to school, for family. Roberts Automotive is located at 193 Pine Street in Attleboro. For more information and to view their code of ethics, you can visit their mm. website at so robertsautomotiveinc.net. <coughs> Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent, brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I might look like an adult, like a person who could possibly be a parent, but I have no idea how to talk like one. And everyone knows that if you want to be a parent, you have to sound good when you say things like, don't make me turn this car around, or because I said so, or don't make me come back there. I don't even really know what this means. But I know that I actually believe my parents when they said them to me, how did they manage to sound so convincing? Here we go. Don't make me come back there. Ugh, no, that's not tough enough at all. Kids can sense weakness. Don't make me come back there. Ooh, yeah, that's better. In fact, that kind of sounded like my dad. We're going to bring him to air. Weird. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to listen to you practice your dad voice. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit adoptuskids.org for more information. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. Clean out your closet and share the warmth. Duffy Pool Funeral Home is conducting their second annual coat drive from November 1st through December 16th. Donations of new or gently used coats can be dropped off seven days a week at Duffy Pool Funeral Home's Winter Coat Bin, located at 20 Peck Street in Attleboro. All donated winter coats will be given out at the St. Joseph's Food Cellar the week of December 20th through the 30th to families in need this winter. Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is Lucy Cabral, Chase Little, and Troy, and the Division One A Super Bowl champs, King Philip High School Warriors. Dominic Damiano is on assignment today. You can call in at 508-222-1320. We are talking with uh, the team captains here from the Super Bowl uh, uh, championship team. Um, so we were talking about uh, your first game when you beat Attleboro, 19-7. Uh, second game, um, you shut out Foxborough. 21 to 0 in the home opener. Um, your defense killed it oh, yeah. during this game. Want to talk about that? Yeah, we uh, really rely on our defense to make stops all the time. Uh, if we stop them deep, then we get good field position because we're not really a big play offense. We kind of grind the ball. It's uh, pretty tough to go 80 yards just running dive, 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 three yards apiece. So I uh, really need our defense to make big stops, get us good field position. Coach Lee already gave a shout out to our, co our coach, Boss, but honestly, our defensive scheme really relies on him. He comes up with a great, great game plan every week, and uh, we, if we go out there and execute it, uh, the te other team should not score points. That sounds great. How about, um, uh, you know, there were only uh, four first downs during that entire game. That's incredible. That is incredible. And then you guys went up to uh, Oliver Ames, um, put on a, a great show with the, uh, the offensive and defensive uh, units. Um, 379 yards to, uh, to Oliver Ames, 58. Score was 42-6. Wow. Sounds like a blowout. What happened there? That's awesome. Yeah, so we just got to give a shout-out to the line, and uh, specifically Sean Garrity, who ran hard the entire game. He just put on a great show out there. And, uh, we just really we were starting to come together as one team. The O line was working well. We were blocking things correctly, and Sean Gary was finding the holes and running for long touchdowns. Uh, yeah, you know it's um once things started to work for us, it was kind of cool because uh you know you look to your your guy next to you. You know we got Carl Snuth at center and uh our other our right tackle Nate Gudis. So you know you look to the other side of you and you see these guys who are just happy because we're winning and. Uh, you look in the backfield, and Sean Garrity's all pumped up, and Leiden's pumped up because we're doing so well. So we all feed off each other, and the cheerleaders are going loud, and uh, uh -huh. all the fans are going wild. <laughs> so it's like, you know, just everything kind of comes together, and that's why, was, why we're successful. A lot of, lot of support from your, uh, your fans and uh, family. I'm sure um, they're all excited. This is the first win ever 
for uh, for you guys. Um, it's got to be so exciting making all these appearances. I want to know what was it like to have breakfast with Drew Bledsoe. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. That breakfast with Drew Bledsoe. Come on, a, uh, who does that? <laughs> childhood NFL quarterback. We're just seeing him. We were watching him on TV, and to be right in front of him right there was crazy. Uh, much like uh, any any superhero, you'd think he's just bigger, taller, just stronger. <laughs> it's <just> surreal. <laughs> How'd you, how'd you how'd guys, guys get, get that opportunity? opportunity? Uh, they invited the, the captains from the Super Bowl teams uh, to the Judd Stadium where you could have breakfast with. Uh, Andre Tipper was also there, and of course, Drew Bledsoe, who gave a speech. And yeah, it was a very interesting experience. We actually sat at the same table as the Reading captains, so yeah, that was interesting. And yeah, it was, it was a great breakfast, good food there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys talk to him at all, personally, Drew? Uh, no, he just gave a speech and uh, he said some great things about teamwork and how you'll remember this for the rest of your life and just mm -hmm. made some great points. Is that true? Will you remember it for the rest of your life? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, Troy's got a question for you. Yeah, so um, I don't know if this started at the, at the beginning of the season or uh, maybe even in the summer, but at what point did you, thought, did you find out that you had something special? I definitely thought after... Our Walpole scrimmage was when we had something special because we always go into Walpole and we expect we always have good competition and I th I thought we really performed well then and I was like this team this team has potential and Coach Lee also commented and said uh, we have the potential to go far after that scrimmage. And I think yeah when we go up at camp too we're all just together you know uh, one of those last days we have a bonfire with the entire team it's just like a different feeling you know you feel deep down in your gut and I remember. Uh, all the seniors were standing around. I remember saying to them, like, we got something special here. I know it's cliche, but you can just feel it. So, um, you know, from the end of last season to seeing everyone working hard, you just kind of could tell something was special here. So um, other than the kind of blowouts that we've mentioned so far, um, when things get tough, when the score is down, you guys aren't doing as well as you planned, how do you, like, recover from that? How important is team chemistry to you guys? Uh, real important, you know, we're a group of best friends, so we never really lose faith or get down on each other. Uh, you just got to believe in the game plan, just keep grinding it out, keep hitting, keep working. Uh, yeah, it'll all come together in the end. Yeah, and uh, when times get tough, we turn to our uh, linemen. They always get the job done. Uh, drive. Like we said, we run dive almost every play, kick on the line and everything. And they really work hard and do a lot for us. Coach, do you, uh, do you ever have some words of inspiration to give them at halftime? Are you afraid to yell at the kids? <laughs> I'm not afraid to yell at them about it. But I, I certainly find that when we come in the locker room, most of the time it's about, you know, you have a limited amount of time, so you have to make those adjustments, see what they're doing, what's what has worked, what hasn't worked, uh, what do we think they're going to be adjusting to. And, uh, again, the coaching staff does a great job, and these guys come out and execute that. Um, you know, we have we've been able to execute our game plan in large part because of how, how well we've played on defense and offense. We complement each other. I think that's a big part of that. And I think these guys, when we talk about when things get tough, what they do, it, it, they always believe. You know, everybody, you know, Mike Tyson said everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And, you know, so things go wrong. You still have, you know, there's bad calls, there's fumbles, there's things like that. These guys never stop believing in themselves. And that's made all the difference for them this year. Uh, as a coach, just overseeing everything, do you, do you, would you consider there's a certain part of the team that's strong, like it's especially strong? Uh, actually, you know, again, complimentary football. I know, again, we talk about all the cliches, but really, we 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 hold on to the ball a long time. So. Uh, some fans get a little bored. They, why are you running so much? But we're, we're it's chewing. important, though. No, it's important. Time of possession is a, is a big we, part. We, we, uh, I mean, we had all, you know, our first win against North, we had the ball. Uh, I think something crazy in this, that there's only 22 minutes. I think we had 18 minutes in the second half of that game. And so it gets easier to play defense when you're doing that. It gets it when you're playing special teams. And you, uh, it all kind of comes together. And we do a good job of making sure that our game plan is all synced together. So uh, on your journey uh, up to the Super Bowl, um, you beat Mansfield on their home turf in the rain, in the rain, 20 to 17, uh, a battle. You guys were really, really okay. tough, definitely. Um, you know, after a, a long string of losses to this rival, uh, KP um, beat Mansfield three years in a row, in a row, you know, two of which were at their field. What was that game like? 
the Mass Effect game this year was very, very different and exciting because it was in the rain, so it was a whole new element that was added to the game. Uh, we were actually down at a few points in that game, and uh, like we touched upon earlier, we just had belief in each other uh, to get the job done. And Ethan Dunn came up with a big, big, big uh, blocked punt uh, it, late in that first half, which really set the tempo for, for the rest of the game, and we gained momentum, and we were able to come away with a win. Uh, I think kind of, you know, we talk about grinding the ball and everything, but, um, you know, our offense, we we just wear teams down. I think it was very important for us because, you know, they, of course, Minutes was not going to give up, but, you know, once you get start getting tired and we kept going and we started seeing success, we just found, you know, the holes in their defense. So, and then defensively, just everyone stepped up and made plays. Uh, so I got a question for, for the offensive guys and the defensive guys. Um, is there a specific play that you guys like to run or a play that you really enjoy running? Don't give your secrets away. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we run Mike lead. If we run 50 offensive plays, we probably run Mike lead 40 of them. And we really base our <laughs> offense off of that. We'll do uh, play action passes. That's really where the majority of our passing games comes from. Uh, again, running game, just lead and kick, dive. Really the only plays we run. <laughs> um, so then you went on to, uh, to beat Franklin 35-13. Talk about that game. That game was actually, that was a tough game for us for the first half. We really didn't get the spark that we wanted uh, out initially, but towards the end of the game, we really got a game plan going together. Yeah, it had and a we nice uh, offensive uh, game plan going there, huh? Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we came out kind of weak. We weren't blocking things correctly, and then we just, we just kept driving. We kept doing, we made team uh, play on special teams, which kind of turned the game back around. And then right when we came out in the second half, we did the same thing, another special teams play, set the tempo for the rest of the game. Excellent. Um, so then you went on the road again and you beat Attleboro. Uh, Attleboro, 36-13, um, racking up 400 yards. 400 yards, that's huge on total offense. And uh, 323 on the ground. Uh, Attleboro's, you know, up front, <laughs> they're huge. You know, yep. we never really faced a team, you know, as big as us or had some people that were uh, bigger than us. So running against them was definitely difficult. Um, but you know our coaching staff's unbelievable, and they found the holes, and they they told us what we had to do. And offensive, you know, the offensive line, we just started working together harder. The running backs running harder, you know. Um, so just together as a team, we were able to pull through it. Would you like to give a shout out to any of the running backs? Because 323 yards, that's, that's a huge, that's yeah. a lot of yards. I mean, <laughs> you, there's so much to say about all of them. You know, Giovanni Fernandez, who just powers powers the ball. Um, Shane Frommer, who's been unbelievable for mm. us, and Alex Olson. Um, the three of them have just been unbelievable. Are any of them seniors? Yes, Giovanni Fernandez and Alex Olson are both seniors. Uh, Shane Frommer's a junior. Is that going to be a big part? Is that going to be a big loss next season, Coach? Yeah, sorry, not to make it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, lo losing all those those three guys uh, is huge. Uh, it's a huge loss. But, uh, again, you saw what Shane was able to do this year for us when Sean Garrity went down, uh, step up and really took the bulk of the carries. And uh, we've got some other guys who, who are coming up that can that can help us out as well, uh, carrying the ball for us. You know, we have uh, Andrew Gelsomini coming up. He did a nice job on Thanksgiving Day this year. And, uh, Aiden Bender and there's some, a couple other guys and hopefully we get uh, Mike Conti back uh, off of injury as well and we'll, we'll go from there. So just a quick question before we go to break. Uh, how important do you guys think or how much or how much have injuries impacted your team over the season? So uh, injuries, we, we faced, faced a lot this year, especially this in our, uh, one of our best players, Sean Gary, doing an ACL in the fourth game of the year. Uh, we lost Mike Conti, who would have been another key running back earlier in the season. And then just back and forth, kids kind of getting hurt, getting bruised, and having to sit games. But it doesn't matter when kids get hurt. We just push through it. We keep going. Guys step up and make plays. Uh, with that, uh, we are going to take our second break. Um, we are for Deep Sports Talk here on the Sports Channel, 1320 AM WARA and online. We'll be right back. The Attleboro Arts Museum is showing its annual nice. members exhibition from December 9th to February 2nd <coughs> with an opening reception on December 10th from 2 to 4 p.m. Awesome. Over 350 nice. works of art by the museum's member artists will be exhibited in the Altmar Gallery. Guest juror yeah, Judith Klein of the Judith yeah. Klein Art Gallery <laughs> in New Bedford will judge the work and award yeah, outstanding yeah, artists at the opening reception. The reception will yeah. 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 the exhibit. The gallery hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. When I grow up, I want to be a glass countertop in a new home. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's best birthday present. When I grow up, I want to be football stadium. When I grow up, I want to be a warm place on a cold day. When I grow up, I want to be a fancy backsplash. When I grow up, I want to be a bike that races around the country. When I grow up, I want to be a bench on a forest trail. I want to be a rocking chair on when a sunny up, porch. I want to be a skyscraper. I want to be a... 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 When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. A public service advertisement brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchel. Satchel is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with this person that's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. <coughs> Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. On February 4th at 7.30 p.m. at Goff Memorial Hall in Rehoboth, the Rehoboth Antiquarian Society will hold their third concert in the 2016 season of the Rehoboth yeah. Arts in the Village series. Sarasa, a duo consisting of cellist Timothy Merton and Jennifer Morshies, will perform pieces composed for famous kings, queens, and dukes. With harpsichord accompaniment, the cellists will perform works by Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi. For information about the concert series, call the Antiquarian Society at 508-463-5384 or visit carpentermuseum.org. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, Lisa Cabral, Chase Little, and Troy. Um, we are talking to the Division 1A Super Bowl champs, King Philip High School Warriors. Um, this is, has been a very interesting conversation with these guys. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have them in studio. Um, I also uh, need to give a shout out to our faithful uh, uh, supporters here, Source Pumping out in Taunton, SourcePumping.com, Carrie Quintel Law Offices out in North Attleboro, Quintel law.net, Frank Bedeck Law uh, over in Taunton, uh, BedeckLaw.com, and Luca B. Signs and Apparel over in Taunton, LucaBSigns.com. So, we were uh, talking about your journey onto the Super Bowl win. Um, we left off at uh, uh, beating Attleboro 36-13. Thir to 13. You guys, uh, this was a perfect season for you. You went on to beat the Taunton Tigers 28-8 to eight, uh, to win the uh, Kelly Rex Division title. Um, the only undefeated team in the Hockamock League. Uh, unbelievable. Um, six seasons. Six seasons. That's, that's awesome. You want to talk about that? What's it like winning Division... Uh, Originals there. Um, you know, it's there's so much good competition in the Hockey Mock. You know, yeah. We're very lucky to play in this league. Uh, you know, half the, the reason we get to the Super Bowl, Bowl and half the reason we beat these amazing teams in the playoffs is because we play such great competition throughout our regular season. So um, it's like kind of an honor to, to be part of it, kind of honor to be uh, Hockey Mock <laughs> champions. Um, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question. So I know I don't, I mean, comparing the NFL to – uh, high school sports can buy, kind of be like apples to oranges, but going back, just as an example, um, like the Panthers last season, the Carolina Panthers I'm talking about, going 15-1 and one on the season, that's almost undefeated, and then making their way to the Super Bowl and just completely choking. Um, like I said, it's apples to oranges, but you guys had an undefeated season, and then you guys went all the way to win the Super Bowl. So was the pressure there? Like, did, were you guys almost like hoping for a loss to just relieve yourself of the pressure, or did you guys get hype off the pressure? Uh, yeah, the there was definitely season. a lot of pressure having it be the first time in school history. We had a lot of guys coming, uh, rallying around us, guys who graduated back in the 80s and 90s, really, hoping us to get the win all the alumni. 
But uh, no, we definitely didn't want to lose, obviously, going into the game, thinking we can win, believing we can win. And uh, I think that's partially what got us the win. So I know that um, I know that with any with any organization or any team sport or anything, there's a lot more uh, a lot more people contributing than you just see on the field. Just the players, just the coaches. Are there any particular shout outs that you guys want to give? Yeah, behind the scenes we have a lot of uh, people working hard and endlessly to give us the opportunities that we need. So I'd like to first uh, give a shout out to Coach Harwood, Mr. Harwood who really helps run the organization, is always providing us with the materials we need for success, and he really just helps get the organization going on the right path. I also want to shout out Miss Rowe. Uh, she does a ton for the program. She helps all the kids, any problems we got with uh, physicals and anything else, she gets that all into the computer and gets us all ready to play. Uh, the administration of the teachers have been uh, phenomenal with us. You know, uh, we face a lot of adversities between, you know, staying up late after practices and stuff. So just them kind of like cooperating with us and making sure we get things done on time, uh, it's been huge for us. Yeah, uh, the parents too, uh, even just signing us up is a lot of money, so that for them to do that for us is awesome. Uh, getting us to gut camp at 6 in the morning, uh, that's hard, no one wants to do that. Uh, yeah, that's just about it. <laughs> now, okay, so like, um, I, I know obviously you guys have been doing this for a decent amount of time, um, and it didn't just happen overnight that you became champions, and you probably started earlier on in your life. Now, as you started uh, and when you started uh, as a kid, were there, were there any players that you uh, looked up to, whether it be uh, in the NFL and in, in college football? Uh, tell us about those people who were role models to Yeah, I'm sure you have a bunch of, uh, bunch of players out there being New England Patriots fans, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'd say when I was a kid, really, the kids I looked up to were, again, just the varsity seniors playing on our football team. Nice. So when we were freshmen, I was looking up to Brett McAvoy, Joe Johnson. Uh, really paved the way for us, let us know how to just do it, how the organization runs. So, yeah, we just really wanted to be like them, when we, or for me at least, I wanted to be like them when I was older. Um, I mean, no, no, continue. Oh, yeah, I mean, just like, um, you know, when I was growing up, I remember I always had a Richard Seymour jersey. So like, ah. I loved him when I was, like, you know, just like that tough attitude. So I want to play football for so long. So uh, that's kind of what got me into it, too, with like dance with the varsity athletes. You just want to be like those guys. They carry themselves a certain way. They talk a certain way. Just you want to be one of them. So like, I mean, I never played football, but I play. I played sports in high school. And when I was a freshman, it's kind of intimidating when you first get into the program. Um, but the upperclassmen can really teach you a lot just by how they carry themselves. Like you said, it's very important. Um, did you did you learn any lessons just by growing up that you didn't know when you came into high school? I mean. Obviously, the playing was different because the players were had more skill. But I mean, did you learn something from your four years of high school? Absolutely. So definitely looking up to those kids, just the leadership qualities that they have that they pass down to you. Because you watch them, you you grow every year. You watch how their leadership evolves and how the other kids react to uh, replacing the captains. How everyone just steps up and does their part. So I think upperclassmen is a huge part of uh, why we were successful this year and uh, why we look up to them because they just kind of paved the way for us. Everything they did before us is why we were able to do what we could this year. Now, you don't have to mention any names because that could be bad, but um, <laughs> do you have any underclassmen that look up to you guys specifically, or do you guys have any favorite underclassmen um, that you feel like you've put in good hands and that will continue to carry your football team to better seasons in the future? I, mean, I, I hope we have people looking up to us because I feel like we've done our job, we've carried this team in the right path, and uh, if, if they're like us when we were younger, they were definitely looking up to us, so I feel like it's our responsibility to make sure that we're leading them into the right path so that they can uh, be in our shoes when they're a little bit older. Uh, a specific player, uh, I want to give a shout out to Jack Pillar because uh, I worked with him close all year. Just, uh, he made me better, I made him better, and I hope that he looks up to me and that uh, he continues the winning streak next year. Uh, yeah, and just Dan and I, you know, working the linemen, it's definitely a tough, tough position to play. You know, we're smashing heads constantly throughout practice. So, you know, it's definitely hard when you get some sophomore, you know, like 180 pounds going against guys like us, you know, 250 pound people. So um, just them looking out to us, you know, just us looking back at them and say, you know, like it's for a good reason, you know, it's for a good cause. Well, that's awesome. Well, on, on your uh, journey over to the playoffs, you know, first round playoff win uh, versus Attleboro, uh, racking up 442 yards um, total offense uh, for a 51-21 win. Holy moly, another, another blowout. What was that all about? Looks like you guys had, uh, had the perfect game plan going on. 
Yeah, offense was really clicking. We came, or uh, yeah, first game of the playoffs, we came out clicking. We were good, uh, fierce, playing fast. Uh, knew exactly what we were doing. We played them two weeks prior. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah two, two weeks, weeks prior. prior so, so I mean, we really knew what to expect from them. Uh, they're big up front. We took care of it. Backs ran hard. Receivers caught the ball. Everyone just played hard. Yeah, clicking on all cylinders. That was a big. That was a big day for our running game. We I think we racked up seven rushing TDs in that game, which was our highest total uh -huh. all year. So definitely a, a, high, a big standard for us. Yeah, and uh, from a defensive standpoint, we did not have to make any different checks really because we played them two weeks earlier. So we knew the plays. We just go out there <laughs> performing even faster than we did the first time. Nice, nice. And then uh, second round of playoffs, um, you beat Marshfield. Marshfield Rams, uh, holding them to only seven <coughs> points uh, when they uh, they averaged 40 points a game for the season. So seven points, that's that's huge. Defense clicking on all heels too, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, really good. It was nice to see. They've been putting up points on everyone to really shut them down to only seven points was crazy. Uh, again, that's when you see our offense only put up 14 points, but our defense really won us that game there, only holding them to seven. So That goes back to Coach Wallace really putting together an A-plus game plan, really put us in a position to succeed. And I honestly felt like that was part of our best defensive performance all year. And it ended with uh, Andrew Dittrich close out the final seconds of their last drive with an interception really close that game and pushes on to the next round. Now, looking at the difference between scores in your first round versus your semifinals round, that's a huge difference, going from 51 to 21 to 14 to 7. Um, was that just because they were a lot better of a team, not to completely uh, rain on Attleboro's parade, but, I mean, what, what was the difference there? Just Marshall is such an incredible program. You know, they're one of the most respected programs in the state, so um, we knew that we, we had to change our game plan so much that uh, it wasn't so much like... Um, like it wasn't easy to run, you know. I mean, it wasn't easy to throw. I mean, it never is, but this truly was um, a grind out game for us. This was one of the games where um, going into it, you had to know it was going to be a battle. Yeah, both programs have tremendous respect for each other, and uh, just Marshall ran a different offense and different defense, so we had to create different schemes to kind of run against that and be able to stop it. So I feel like just preparing for those two games was completely different, not reflected in the score. Uh, just to bring the coach over for another question, um, when you look at other programs like. Can you almost predetermine what kind of offense, defense they're going to run just based off of who you know from the past seasons? Well, I, I, nowadays with the film work is so different uh, than, than it used to be. Everybody you know, sees every film, every game film, so you're, there's no secrets. Everybody knows what you're going to get into, and that comes into the preparation again. So uh, trying to get these guys uh, on defense to know exactly what they're going to see, what plays people run out of, what formations the most, and trying to get them on offense. This is what they do to our formations. This is how they're going to play trips. This is going to how they're, this is what they do if we're in double tights, what they're going to do. And so all that preparation goes into everything that these guys see. So you want them to not have any surprises on game day so they can play fast. Uh, now, you said, I mean, is, is film a huge part of preparation? Oh. Huge. We we watch film. You know, coaches watch a ton of film on their own, mm -hmm. and then obviously we take we even with the boys now we watch we we incorporate that into our practice schedule. We're watching film twice a week with them, uh, so they're seeing again, getting getting to know their opponent, who they're going to line up their individual battles, and then the overall scheme of the other team, what they like to do, and try and always try and take away on defense what they do best, and on offense try to find where we can attack them uh, and, and have success. Now, is it there the entire team sitting in that film room, or do you have specific people that you really go to to talk about and have them well, execute plans? Uh, we have the whole uh, team, uh, at least the varsity. You know, the JV guys, or when we're in the film room, they're usually uh, working out in the weight room or, or doing some plays for themselves, getting ready for their JV game. Uh, we do a lot together. We practice JV and varsity together on the field, but when it comes to the film time, um, we really just keep with the varsity guys. Guys will be playing on Friday night. And with that, we are going to take our last break. You are listening to 4 Deep Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA.
From November 17th to December 15th, the Attleboro Arts Museum will exhibit art and celebrate trees, lights, and symbols of the season. The exhibition will feature artful Christmas trees, wreaths, Hanukkah menorahs, and Kwanzaa canaras created and decorated by volunteer artists. All pieces will be on display in the museum's Otmar Gallery during part of November and Community Gallery in December. The work will be raffled off to benefit museum art classes and exhibitions. If you are interested in creating an original holiday theme, Piece, email office at attleboroartsmuseum.org. Looking for more opportunity? Want to improve your skills? Need a better job? The Literacy Center can help. We have year-round classes for adults in English, computer literacy, and high school equivalency. With the help of teachers and tutors, you can pass your citizenship test, make a resume, or learn how to speak and write better English. Classes held during the day, evening, or on Saturdays. Join the great group of people at the Literacy Center. We serve 500 people a year who want to make a better life. Check out our website, www.theliteracycenter.com, for tutor, training, or class schedules. Don't put it off. We are here to help. The Literacy Center, 80 North Main Street, Attleboro, 508-226-3603. A place to learn, volunteer, and grow. Amigo Incorporated, located at 33 Perry Avenue in Attleboro, is the result of one family's journey to find answers for their autistic child. Founded by a small group of parents in 1971, Amigo has grown to include more than 30 residential homes, a fully accredited school, and applied behavioral analysis in homes, schools, and daycares. Amigo touches the lives of over 300 families in Massachusetts, offering Wait, so services right and programs yeah, for right, both okay. children and right. adults with autism spectrum disorders and other developmental disabilities. For more information, just please just visit their website yeah. at www.amigoinc.org. Popular historian and speaker Dr. Gary Highlander will be back this December at Richard's Memorial Library in North Attleboro for a three-part series on John Marshall and the Supreme Court. The series will take place on three consecutive Thursdays, December 1st, 8th, and 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. Justice John Marshall was the longest-serving Chief Justice and a member of the court for over 30 years. Many of his decisions are still having an effect today. Dr. Highlander's talks are popular and fill up fast, so register early. To register, email mholmes at salesinc.org. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Lucy Cabral and uh, Chase Little and Troy. Troy, I don't even know your last name. Do I know your last Bryce. name? Oh. Bryce. Hello, <laughs> Troy Bryce. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we are with the uh, Division 1A state champs, King Philip High School Warriors. Uh, they are in studio along with uh, their head coach, Mr. Brian Lee. <laughs> um, we were talking about their journey all the way up to the Super Bowl. We left off on uh, the Marshfield, uh, beating the Marshfield Rams. They, these guys had a, a perfect 12-0 uh, and 0 season here. Um, for the South sectional final win against uh, Bridgewater Rainham, um, <laughs> uh, you guys grinded it. 33-28. What was that like? That was, that was a pretty exciting game, huh? We know going in that uh, that team was going to be very, very good. I mean, they, they beat Severian, uh, the, the number one ranked team in the state at that point. So we knew that it was going to be a battle going in, but we also had confidence in ourselves that if we went in there, played our game plan correctly, we'd come away with a victory, and that's what happened. Yeah, they have a great running back, too, so preparing for him was a lot different. Uh, it really changed our defensive schemes. And then offensively, we said the same thing. We always do turn a uh, dive in power when things go wrong. Okay, so now I know uh, I know with a lot of championship teams, there's obviously there's the the desire, the want to win um, mm. every single game, um, but a lot of times if you look around, there's also some kind of ulterior driving force behind it. Like um, I know for I I mean I, being a baseball fan, I, I think about the teams that you know that broke that broke their curses of whatever a hundred something years. Um, and also the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013 where the Red Sox ended up winning. And that was kind of a driving force behind that. Did you guys have any kind of driving force, like do it for, insert name? You know, yeah, you can say you do it for a lot of reasons, but um, we did it for ourselves, you know. And we uh, we love this team, we love this organization, we love where we live, mm -hmm. and 
you know, the people have been, like laid this path for us. You know, we know a lot of upper class, we know a lot of alumni, and um, they just laid the path for us. They they told us how to be a warrior. So uh, for them, for them not to have a Super Bowl at all, you know, we felt like it was our duty. You know, they taught us how to play football. It's our duty to win this for them, and uh, we came out with uh, the victory. All right, now I know that a lot of times also with like a really good team, there's also like another team that's also really good. <laughs> and a lot of times that team, you end up clashing with them a lot and they end up being uh, the closest thing to a rival. Is there a team like that? I, I would say that. I would, oh, I would, oh, sorry. No, it's probably the Franklin team, right? Well, I would say Franklin or Mansfield because yeah, Mansfield over yeah. the years uh, has been giving us a lot, a lot of great games. So I feel like um, that rivalry has grown a lot. I mean, it's, it's always been a rivalry, rivalry but... but I, th I think that would be our biggest rival would be Mansfield. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, North Attleboro steps in close, too, because mm. there's always a huge game, especially this season, kicking it off uh, with them, because they beat us last year. It's just back and forth, huge game every year. And I think it comes with a lot of respect, too, you know. Uh, growing up, you know a lot of people from the teams now, so now you're playing yeah. against them, you know. So um, it comes with a lot of respect for each other and for the other teams, so that makes it way more fun. You know, we were just talking about the North Attleboro game and how much fun it was to play against a team with uh, – you know, such class and how we respected them, they respected us. Yeah, I'll say on uh, Mansfield too, like Coach Lee said, playing them, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, they hit harder. So I uh, really just a different, it's like a playoff game, really. I mean, always just come give it your all, so. Well, do you want to? Yeah, good. Uh, speaking of the playoffs, just looking at the final game, it was between you guys and Bridgewater Raynham. They came in at the number six seed of the bracket, so. If you ask me, I'm not thinking the number six seed's going to make it to the final game. And that was your closest scored game. And as the games went on, you guys went from 51 to 21 versus Attleboro. Then you went 14 to 7 versus Marshfield. And then it was even closer against them, Bridgewater, 33 to 27. So I think that really puts into perspective that seeds don't matter. Um, and that you guys really have to prepare for whoever you're going to face because anyone can beat you. Um, do you guys have anything to say about that or their program or preparing for that game did their seed really matter to you guys or do you treat them equal as anyone else i think their seed was a false statement of what their team actually could do uh they were the sixth seed simply because of their record and they had their record simply because of the fact that they played one of the toughest schedules in the whole state so the fact that they were uh they had four lo three losses or whatever they had going to the playoffs doesn't determine how good the team actually was because they were playing teams like severian and dartmouth and teams and very high caliber teams that are capable of doing good things, so that's why they had a low seed, but we knew going in that that team was going to be very tough. And just the fact that, going back to like the preparation for the game, you know, because we play those North Atterboroughs and Mansfields and all these tough teams, you know, we face a team like Bridgewater Arena, man, it's not like a different animal because you play those hard teams that we play. Um, could you guys describe, like, the difference between playing specifically in the Hockamock versus anybody else? Like, is there... I mean, do you guys think your league is, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's definitely different than playing any other teams? I mean, the Hawk is one of the toughest uh, conferences in the state, and um, it's just really no different from the playoffs because every, every game's a battle on the Hawk. So uh, just like Paul said, every week we play, uh, we play a tough team, so just any, every game's pretty much the, uh, the same. So, so um I think we mentioned this before, that you guys had tons and tons of support from your school, your town, your community. Uh, is there anything in particular you guys want to say to all those people who came out to support you guys? I would just like to give a big shout out and say thank you uh, to everyone who came to our game at Gillette Stadium and to everyone who uh, helped uh, support the team throughout the season. And also the gavel for uh, giving us free <laughs> wings uh, two weeks before the game. So that really helped fuel us out for the, the big Super Bowl game. That's great. I saw that pic on, on Facebook. I <laughs> went on the page. I'm like, wow, you guys ate a lot of yeah, wings. I lot love of wings. Yeah. I do. I, I love wings. And i got to try that place out. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, I work at the Eagle Brook, so everyone mm -hmm. there knows about the game. So um, we shout out to the Eagle Brook, too. Just, it's kind of, we're, we're lucky that we live in a smaller town where everyone knows what's going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, you drive to the center of town, you see good luck KP signs, you see people I've never, ever met before, and they look at me and say, hey, good luck, you know, stuff like that. So just as a community, everyone rallied together, and um, you know, we're extremely thankful because we wouldn't be where we are without them. Yeah, it's really huge. Even the younger kids, like the Pop Warner teams, they all come to our games, they all watch us, they all look up to us because um, my dad coaches the Pop Warner team, so I go to see them. And all those kids are just so excited to see the uh, 
Warriors players there and they just love it and they look up to us. People I don't even know saying congratulations, good luck and all that. That's great. A lot of family support, a lot of uh, fan support. Um, it, it's got to feel really, really good. All this publicity, you guys, uh, you know, playing at Gillette, that must be... That's, that must have been incredible. Yeah, do you want to describe that? Just the feel, like the atmosphere? <laughs> crazy. First walking onto the field was, uh, had to be the coolest moment of my life. Looking, we walked out of the Patriots tunnel, and we looked to the left, and we saw all of the KP fans screaming and cheering <laughs> for us in the fan section. And let me tell you, we had a lot of fans there, probably more than any of the uh, any of the teams brought because we were so close. It was, it was truly amazing to walk on the field. So you, got, so you guys um, beat Franklin on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, <laughs> um, seventh straight Thanksgiving win en route to uh, the Super Bowl. Um, that's got to be kind of cool, huh? Playing at home and winning and, and uh, big Thanksgiving Day. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. It was a good game for us to uh, really get revenge, I guess. We came out slow the first <laughs> time, so this time we really came off different pace. Uh, we fumbled twice, didn't really let that get us down. I uh, just stuck to the game plan, really grinded out, got the win. Uh, so I, I think it's time to go specifically into the actual Super Bowl game. Um, yeah. So this was easily your closest game score-wise um, during your entire playoff run. The final score was 21-18. to 18. Just looking at the quarterly breakdown, it was a close first quarter as there was no scores, 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. But you guys kept a steady track uh, as you scored seven points in every other of the quarters. Um, do you guys want to give a sh I mean, do you do you guys know the reason why you won that game? Or that was a pretty close game. I'll give you a reason why I won that game. It's because our sure. quarterback showed up that game. He really, <laughs> really had a good game. He's been playing well all season, but this time we really put the ball in his hands. He won that game for us, and he, he had a great performance. Mm -hmm. I also want to shout out the lineman again for uh, keeping him very well protected and just doing the job all night. Because it was tough to try to run the ball, and then they really stepped up in the passing game as well. And when we needed to run, we could run. I was going to ask about the running game specifically, because if you look at the um, total numbers of rushing, uh, you guys, what was it? What were the total numbers? I'm just trying to look at the stats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just just, compa just comparing your rushing stats specifically to Redding's, um, the rushing game didn't look like it was working out that well. No, that yeah, they, they broke off a few long rushing plays, but that's probably why the numbers were so high. But, yeah, they, they, they had a good rushing team. Yeah, on our offense for us, it was definitely different than most games. Uh, we could really grind the ball down any team we played its throat. But uh, against Reading, we had to try and pass the ball, really mix up our game plan, and uh, we could. Shout out to Brendan again. Had a great game. The receivers catching the ball. It's awesome. And, uh, you know, they loaded the box on us, too, so it wasn't easy, easy sledding in there. You know, we got a five lineman, and, you know, maybe a tight end or maybe a fullback coming, but they outflanked us. And, uh, you know, the score, uh, 2018, it shows what our what a kicker can do. So we just want to shout out to our freshman kicker, Cole Baker, because what a season the kid had. You know, it's not easy kicking field goals, as we can see. And the pros, you know, they're missing field goals. So three points was the difference in this game, and um, he made all three extra points. So if he doesn't make those, it's a completely different ball game. I'd also like to give a shout out to the three guys that really came in clutch in the receiving game. Uh, Tyler Janeski, who had a few very clutch pass, uh, catches. Ethan Dunn catches his first touchdown, and the man sitting right next to you. Yeah, I was going to say, the man sitting right next game. to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, going back to Cole, if you look at if you look at just in writing, they had a Redding had a rushed failed and a kick failed, but. He made all three of his kicks, so those three points really did make a difference. But uh, Brett, would you like to go in on your two catches for what was it? How many yards? Uh, 131. Yeah. 131. Wow. <laughs> How was it? I mean, so, one of them yeah, was for was a touchdown just, too. Yeah, it was just an amazing feeling, just uh, you know, run because I haven't really been running around all year because we just we just run the ball. We uh, we passed really well again. Great protection. Uh, Ran routes the right way. Lydon uh, fit the ball in there perfectly. It was just a great overall performance passing. Nice. Do you want to? Yeah. Um, do you have one more question? We've got like 30 seconds. I can't believe we're almost out of time. time oh, man. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, at this time, uh, you know, we're almost out of time. We are. Uh, we want to thank uh, Division One a state champs, King Philip Warriors, for being on the show today. Uh, once again, uh, we would like to thank our supporters, Source Pumping, Kerry Quintal Law Offices, Frank Bedeck Law, Luca B. Signs and Apparel. Hey, we are having a... Um, uh, can we override that? 
No? Oh, looks like we're going to be going out. Ah, oh, really? Oh, no, it looks like we get yeah, another. Okay, you know what? Um, we are going to have a, a fundraiser in February, and we want you guys to come down. It's going to be a live broadcast at Home Plate over in Taunton, February 18th. Um, live broadcast show from 12 to 2. We definitely want you guys to come down and put you on the air again. Uh, You're listening to WARA. We're out of time. <laughs> All right. Have a yeah, one side. One side. That's why I want to hide. I want to ask another question. Yeah. Sweat to death, too. Oh, well. Uh, but definitely, you guys. That was good. Awesome. 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 Thank you guys for coming in. Oh. Wait, 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 I need to get a picture. I need to get a picture, you guys. Oh, yeah.